all these matches and you're having these great opponents. That's the strength of the Anawai uh, Fatu family there. Yeah, you know, and that's one people that they, they, they sort of got it, you know, I mean, with, with when they say that, and you have just mentioned it and brought it up, and I really like that. You said the Anawai family and the Fatu family. You're exactly right, because that's who we are. On my dad's side, we are the Fatu. That's my dad's last name. On my mom's side, that's her dad's last name is on Hawaii. You know, and that's where Auckland Sika comes in at. So, no, they don't open the doors for all of us, you know, for each and every one of us, especially all their, their nephews, their kids. And like I said before, when one Samoan, when you see one Samoan, trust me, you're going to either see two or three more Samoans, you know, or two or three more on Hawaii, or two or three more Fatus, you know. So just like you said, when we went to Japan, we went to Mexico together, went to Japan, we even went to Italy together. We went to Rome when Yokozuna, when Yokozuna passed away, I was supposed to be on that same trip that he went to Italy. Oh, wow. I was supposed to be on that because I went with Yokozuna on the first time he went to Italy when he left WWF, I think it was a year or two or a year and a half. And then that's when me and him first went to Italy. Some company got a hold of us. And Yoko wanted me to go with him. And then I went, and I was so happy I went with him the first time to make sure that, you know, to help him carry his bags and just the things my cousin need. You know, if I got to go do something for him, he's my cousin. I love him, you know, and I took care of my cousin wherever we go, and he took care of me. I wasn't even on the card, you know, but he, he eventually got the promoter to book me on the show. And then the second round going back to Italy is when Yoko ended up going by himself. He couldn't get me on that, that second trip, you know, because his money was like really outrageous. It was sky high. You know what I mean? So Yoko nearly has to pay me to carry his bags, you know, <laughs> on that second on that second trip. But I didn't end up going for whatever I guess something I oh, I know why it was. It was my passport that just happened to fall the weekend and I didn't have my passport and my documentaries in order. So that's why I didn't make that second trip. But yeah, Greg the Hammer, my buddy Greg the Hammer, which is I really, really love too. Greg the Hammer is a really nice guy. You know, you don't run into a lot of nice people in this wrestling business. You can almost say the ones that I'm telling you that I really love and I care. When I tell you that, it's because I mean it. You know, I know this is an interview, but it's also a shoot interview. And it's also the world to know that everything that comes out of Tony Kidd's mouth is for real. There is no fake here. Wrestling is fake. I'm not fake. I'm real. So Greg the Hammer was the one that told me a lot of story about what happened out there when Yoko passed away. So, but other than that, you know, we're everywhere. So you look it up, even to today in the West Coast, I got my son, Jacob Fatu, the Samoan werewolf. You can look him. I my other son, Journey Fatu, the Samoan savage. So I'm basically here in the West Coast. And we're running all over, up and down the West Coast. We're booked every week. We're all over. And I just go with my kids to give them that extra, you know, like protect them to make sure that promoters don't eat them and spit them out. You know, I teach them what what other legends tech taught me, like Piper. Not only they taught me how to wrestle in the ring, not only they taught me the psychology, they also taught me how to live life even outside the ring, you know? how to become a good man and a good father and a, and, and a good grandfather. They, there's so much the legend that taught me I'm just spreading that disease over to my kids. And that's why I run around with them. You see me on the time on the Facebook, I'm with my boys because my kids have a lot of talent and they're great wrestlers, you know, Journey uh, Fatu and Jacob Fatu. There's a company out here that's one of the best companies that we work for out here too is ABW, All Pro Wrestling. And they also have one in Sacramento, which is SPW. And they have G, G, I think, GEW. I mean, everything has to end with a W out here, <laughs> you know. And, and then there's also one out there, you know, in L.A. Of course, you guys know my brother, the Samoan Dynasty, owns a big center out there in, uh, in Inglewood, California, you know, Knox Pro Wrestling out there. And then also here in Sacramento, which is I own another company out here in Sacramento, which is called the Samoan SWAT Team. Now, back to what you told me. We're in Mexico. We're in Japan. So look at this. Samoan SWAT team, Knox Pro, Samoan Dynasty, all related. All different names, but we're all related. Same family. 
See, there is it is. Cool or what? No, that's the way it is. And, you know, when you look at the family tree, and this is where we're going to get into the wrap here, and I just want to say we usually end it by asking about the legacy uh, of the performer, but when we've talked to your brother Rikishi, and we even talked to, uh, to Matt NOI, we talked to him uh, a few years ago before he passed away, we talked about the legacy of the family. And when you look down the family tree and you see Kokina, a.k.a. Yokozuna, and you see Matt, who was also known as Rosie in the WWE, and you even see Roman Reigns, what he's doing in the WWE now, and obviously yourself, and Eddie, your brother Umaga, the, the family tree, just the, the, the children of the greats, of the Afas and the Sikas, and, and the and everyone that's in your family. I don't want to leave anybody out, but there's so many of them. What is the legacy of the Anawai Fatu family when the book is closed on professional wrestling? Wow. I don't even know where to start. And um, I'm actually getting emotion about this because that type of, that's a tough question, you know. I just don't know where to start, but I can, I can, I can say this. Excuse me. I, there's so much that come out of this. A legacy we would like to leave behind is for the people, and not only just wrestling fans, but even the wrestlers that's been around our entire family to know what type of good people that we were. You know. Our legacy will always live on and would never die because of our talent and who we are, the type of people we are, and the given people that we are. We'll give you our last shirt off our back. You don't find too many dynasties like that in this in the world in the world of wrestling, you know. So that's the legacy that I would say that I would like to leave behind. Like I said, that's just one of them. There's a lot, a lot of other things that I haven't even told you guys, but that's just one of the legacy that we would love to leave behind us is the world to know what type of good people that we are. 